Alright, so let's go ahead and get this done because I gotta figure out how I'm getting to the next generation. They said my Xbox was gonna be here tomorrow, but they haven't shipped it and shit yet. I might have to bank on Best Buy going through with my pre-orders. I, I don't know, man. It's a whole thing. Anyways, this is the video where we take all the 2K rankings we made throughout the years and see if these scores actually stand. In other words, these scores that we gave some of these games put them in a certain place. However, we still may disagree with that placement. But I do think the scores got us in a general area, so I'm going to be looking at these two at a time. That way, if we need to swap an order, I think that'll make things much easier. Alright, so in the first spots, we have 2K11 and 2K16 that both amassed perfect scores, perfect 10s. In reality, looking back at it, I don't think any 2K deserved a perfect 10 for the simple fact of gameplay. Every single year there was an issue that pissed us off. However, I would absolutely agree that these are the best 2Ks, and whichever way you want to order them, it honestly doesn't matter, it's a toss-up to me. Both of them qualify as some of the best looking 2Ks on their respective consoles, very memorable presentations, very memorable jumps from their predecessors. So maybe if I could go back, I would give these around like a 9.9 .9 rating, however, I do agree with their placements as 1A and 1B. Speaking of 9.9 .9 ratings, that's what NBA 2K12 got, and I would agree with this being the third best 2K. I believe that this was a very underrated installment. It came out during the lockout year, so it, it was a very screwy release. There were no rookies at the beginning, but people have to look back and realize that they took upon NBA 2K11 and they added to it. More features, more teams, and I'm very curious as to what the sentiment actually was around this time. Did we find NBA 2K12 better than NBA 2K11 before the nostalgia hit? I don't know, but this was definitely a great game, and it's still usable if you remember my video that I did on the PC version, where you're able to use the ultimate base roster. I can't even imagine how fortunate some of y'all were to have had PC back then to enhance what was already a great console release. However, I do not agree with what's coming up here. I have NBA 2K7 at a 9.5, and I have NBA 2K14 at a 9.1, and that is going to be our first flip. I'm gonna have to swap those. I'm going to have to have NBA 2K14 at the 4th spot. NBA 2K7 was the first 2K that I ever reviewed. It was only the second 2K that I'd played in my lifetime, so I may have a bit of a special attachment to it. And there's no doubt that this was a great release. There's actually no coincidence that 2K7 and 2K14 being the first game released on each console generation, the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4, it's really not a coincidence they ended up so close together. However, I can't in good faith look at 2K7 and say, yeah, that was a better game for its time than 14. I, I just can't. 14 pushed so many boundaries when it came out, and it did it so well, in fact, here we are in the year 2020, a whole seven years after this release, and we're asking how come the graphics really never looked like this again. I was in complete and utter awe of the jump from the PS3 to the PS4 for like a whole three weeks after this game came out. I can't describe any other video game like that in my life. And don't get me wrong, 2K7 pushed a lot of boundaries as well, and this game came at a time where 2K didn't have a whole lot of expectations. People were still playing NBA Live as their main game back then. Something as simple as signature shots, signature styles that really wowed us, that was a new thing that 2K7 brought to the table. There was a whole host of fun features, it really had the original My Career if you go back and look at it. So both of these were great games, they were great releases, however I am going to have to have 14 over 7. But 7 will remain there, I am not going to push it below 2K10. NBA 2K10 has a score of 8.2, it is going to remain in its 6th spot, and it's a very critical 2K, it was definitely an improvement upon NBA 2K9, and it was the game that traditionally introduced my career as we came to know it. So for whatever reason, after NBA 2K7, that beautiful mode just disappeared, they didn't even have any type of iteration of it for 8 and 9, and when you think about it, that qualifies 10 as a transformative game in this series, because here we are an entire 10 years later, next gen console dropping tomorrow, what is everybody most excited about? My career, building their player, the city. Take a look at the city and take a look at where we started with this game in NBA 2K10. These were the seeds and we've come a really really long way. And so 2K10 just narrowly edges out NBA 2K15. That game came in with a score of 8.1 and I think one of the reasons this is appropriate is because when you look at 2K10 it was an improvement upon 9. However, it's... <laughs> In some ways, 15 was an improvement up on 14, but it was such a noticeable downgrade in graphics, that's what was disappointing. I will never forget opening that game for the first time and expecting just an entire new world, expecting my mind to be blown, and I was disappointed. I felt like I was playing a slightly smoother version of 14. However, the game's no scrub. This also introduced a future that everybody's excited about tomorrow, affiliations, which is kind of funny considering everybody always liked this feature and wanted to keep this feature, yet they just kind of took it out after 17 and they're bringing it back here. However, they're known for that and this was a very important game in transforming the way we think about my career and the way we think about Park. And I just realized NBA 2K15 at an 8.1 is actually in a three-way tie. <laughs> It's tied with NBA 2K9 and NBA 2K19. Wow, these rankings came out very close. Okay. Well, I think about NBA 2K9 and NBA 2K19, ironically, very much the same. 
games that pissed me the fuck off. Where NBA 2K9 had unblockable dunks, NBA 2K19 had unblockable self alley oops. Where NBA 2K9 had a transformational feature in basically what was all-star team up that really never worked, NBA 2K19 had their play now online mode, which for a lot of the time did not work, and when it did, it was garbage. So I'm admittedly nostalgic about NBA 2K9, I'm sure one day for some reason I'll be nostalgic about 2K19, but if I'm being honest and I really remember what I thought about these games, I heavily dislike them both. So we can just toss these in whichever order you see fit, and I think that I can comfortably say that I would put NBA 2K15 above both of them, even if it's only just for the affiliations. However, I know people are going to disagree with this, how did NBA 2K13 end up below NBA 2K9 and NBA 2K19? Well, I'll tell you, it's because this game is nowhere near as good as you remember. It was very narrow. It got an 8 where the others got an 8.1. And I have to tell you, the nostalgia is so strong with NBA 13 because of the soundtrack, because of the presentation. But boy, was that gameplay a steaming pile of dog shit. Seven years later, I can rattle off some problems just off the dome. The impossible Hall of Fame computer with that ridiculous shot clock cheese. The cheesy outlet passes that basically broke online. Also, the same dunking problem as NBA 2K9. You could not block dunks. This my career mode was not even as good as the one that was in NBA 2K11. And those are just the things that I remember without looking at anything that was written down. I would die on this hill. NBA 2K13 was not good. We may have some fond memories of it being the last main 2K for the PlayStation 3. Jay-Z did a bang up job. But if you're desperate to put this game at the top of some list, it's on the top frustrating 2Ks. Ha, <laughs> speaking of frustrating 2Ks, hey, we just did this. NBA 2K20 has a massive drop off at the score of 7.4. And not only do I agree, I agree with it being over NBA 2K. 18 which is a 6.9. 2k20 might have had its problems and its alleged false advertising but we are not even that far removed from nba 2k18 so nobody should have a problem remembering what a fumbling mess it was. It was damn near unplayable. Nobody should be nostalgic for fumbling, for missed layups, bump steals. There, there's just no way this is gonna start popping up and people are gonna be saying this was the greatest 2k or oh I miss nba 2k18. No man, this game was astastic and as a matter of fact I'm going to bump it behind nba 2k8. I have nba 2k8 sitting at a 6 here and i had to stare at this one because i was i was a little bit confused on how it ended up this low this is it's been a really long time since we ranked this one but i do remember one of the big reasons is it was just such a downgrade from its predecessor nba 2k7 that fun lively game where they really were just experimenting and really had the building blocks of something amazing they just ditched that style and went with something that was a lot more boring in every way in presentation and features and graphics and it felt like a lot of people just might not have noticed because well while NBA 2K7 may have been popular, again, the community was nowhere near as big to witness that drop off. However, what NBA 2K8 was not was unplayable. I may have been disappointed with the things that they did or the things that they didn't do, but it was still very delightful to play for its time and really had us all looking forward to NBA 2K9. So I'm bumping 18 behind it. And that brings us to the big decision here. Do we bump it behind NBA 2K17? Now, I have 17 scored as a 5. And I realized after ranking it, my problems with the game may not have necessarily mattered to a lot of people because because, well, everyone plays Park, and it had affiliations. It was enjoyable for people. But when you get on the topic of that unplayable factor, this game literally released broken. The very first night I played it, I was being double teamed before I walked across the court and not a smart double team, not a double team with rotation. No, they were literally just trapping my guy and leaving somebody open under the paint. First time I had ever seen that on a consistent basis. The game was ugly. It was the worst looking 2K on this console generation. It introduced aiming layups, which was a god awful feature. Even once they fixed that double team AI, the AI of the computer was still trash. It didn't matter who the player was. They had JJ Redick tendencies. They were all stepping up to the three point line in transition, pulling up for three. They reused the same exact park. They took NBA 2K16's park and they made it dark. That is disrespectful. We might look back fondly at NBA 2K17's my career or the park rather. That is still so disrespectful. That cringe ass orange juice shit is almost as bad as be fresh. It's not as bad as be fresh, but it's damn near right. It's right there. But at the end of the day, I am just never going to get over the fact that I played NBA 2K18 knowing that I was just going to have to deal with glitches. Not just your regular everyday 2K grievances, no, actual glitches. 18 was so bad, in fact, that if you remember, we were all willing to give NBA Live a chance. We really indulged in that. We were down bad enough to at least consider looking to them as saviors. So, although I do realize that maybe 17 was a little better than I thought because people like the park mode, I'm not backing off of my hatred for that game. However, I don't hate anything enough to put it behind NBA 2K18. 18 was inexcusable. Therefore, I will make my final change and NBA 2K18, at least on this list, will be heralded as the worst 2K game.
And so, just for reference, this is how the list changes. This is my official list, and I'm sure plenty of you disagree. Honestly, this is all pretty subjective. A lot of this has to do with nostalgia. A lot of this has to do with what features you enjoyed. So let me know what your list would be. Make sure to leave that in the comment section below. And make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a video drops because next gen is going to be lit. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.